Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is my friend's Xbox that I repaired in a previous video and I gave it back to him. Uh, he used it for a week, he told me he played it for uh, like an hour each night and it's been absolutely rock solid. So yeah, thankfully this thing looks like it's fixed. Uh, if you want to see that video where I fixed this, uh, go and watch the previous video but what I want to do today is my friends asked me if I could add some mods uh, to his Xbox so I'm going to do that and I'll just quickly go through what I'm going to do the first mod I want to do you're not going to see it on here um, is I want to well he wants me to update the BIOS uh, in this Xbox he wants me to install Sir BIOS the second mod he wants me to do is install a knock to a fan and replace the stock fan that's in this Xbox. Um, now I'm going to carry out another mod that he doesn't know I'm going to do. I'm going to surprise him with it. And if I bring it in, here it is here. This is the mod I'm going to do that is going to surprise him. I'm going to be installing a, a 4 terabyte hard drive and it's going to replace the 250 gig IDE hard drive in this thing obviously I'm going to update the IDE cable to an 80 pin IDE cable and obviously because this is a SATA drive I'm going to have to install one of the really nice StarTech IDE to SATA converters so if you stick around I'll crack on with all that now the first Thing I want to do with this Xbox is I want to update the M8 Plus BIOS that's on here you'll see it when I turn on the Xbox you'll see the M8 Plus logo it's just there look um, it's just the old legacy BIOS that's in there and my friend wants me to update it to Sir BIOS now the mod chip that's in this Xbox I'll just turn it off because it's bit loud the mod chip that's in this Xbox is a duo x2 now it's called a, a duo x2 because it actually can store two BIOS images on it um, it has one mega flash but it's banked into two uh, separate images that it can use so you've got bank zero which is 512k of flash and then you've got bank one which is another 512k of flash and I'll show you later on when I get inside it's got a switch that you can flick um, and then you can switch between which bank uh, you want so when you're flashing this mod chip you can't really go wrong because if you do a bad flash you just switch over to the say if I bad flash bank zero I switch over to bank one let the Xbox boot, once it's booted I flip that switch back to bank zero and then I can flash the BIOS image again so you can't really go wrong with it and with it being one of the older mod chips it should be very easy to flash so yeah I'm going to crack on with that now I'm going to flash the BIOS uh, to that mod chip so what I've done off camera is I've gone ahead and I've downloaded Sir BIOS flasher I'll put a link in this description below where you can get this from and um, it's very easy just burn it onto a DVDR you can actually burn it onto a CDR as well uh, and you just burn it and then that helps you flash uh, the mod chip in your Xbox so yeah I'll get everything set up and then we'll get flashing the BIOS in this Xbox now I'm going to be flashing this Xbox live uh, so if we f*** up we f*** up together <laughs> so let's get flashing the Xbox I'll eject the drive the flasher boot disc in the Xbox I know for we should get game you can see it came up game let's start And as you can see, 
Now I've not flashed it yet guys, what's happening there is it's loaded serve BIOS already. Because uh, you can do that, you can, ex you can load it without actually flashing your mod chip. So, moment of truth, let's go and flash it. Now I'm going to be using Gentox. I'm going to press that. Now, I'm going to be using the old hard drive way I set this up. So I need to select UDMA2. Um, the reason for that is I can't go higher than that because I've not installed the 80 pin IDE cable or the SATA hard drive. So the original Xbox is UDMA2. So I'm gonna have to flash it with that. Once I get everything set up, I'll go in and reflash the chip and I'll probably pick UDMA5 or UDMA6. Um, but at the moment, I'm just setting it up so I need to select UDMA2 and remember this has two banks of 512k so I need to choose the 512k version so I'm going to select that and we're ready it's asking me am I ready of course I'm ready I'm always ready I was born ready <laughs> everything's in place I'm going to get ready to flash it baby hope it goes well because if it goes wrong it up together <laughs> okay so what I need to do is I need to go to advanced I need to go to flash menu and flash from HD and there it is and we're off flashing the BIOS And Xbox has powered off and there we go we got Sir BIOS so yeah that's a successful flash of the BIOS everyone's a winner and I think it's still booting the disc actually shouldn't be booting the disc yeah it's booting the disc let me eject the disc the door and hopefully it boots to the dash and I bet you it's because I was trying to boot the disc and do that again and this uh, BIOS yeah it's because it was trying to boot from the disc Yeah, I can hear the hard drive. And there we go. We're back in our dash. So that's a successful Sir BIOS flash. And they're very easy to flash these older mod chips. Um, you saw how easy it was. <laughs> Super easy. Uh, and like I said, I'll put a link uh, to this disc if you've got like a, an older uh, BIOS in fact if you've got if you've got an Aladdin uh, mod chip as long as it's got the older flash chip in there and it's not the newer cloned version you'll be able to do exactly the same thing uh, and flash this uh, like I've just shown you and it's super easy what I want to do next is strip this thing down because I want to first solder in the pin header for the fan because obviously you can't use the one that's in there and then I'm going to install the fan now to get inside the Xbox you need a couple of Torx bits and the first one you're going to need is a T10 and the second one you're going to need is a T20 <laughs> I'll sort that out once I've got this up and running
So what I like about this electric screwdriver guys, it's got a clutch on it, so you can't over tight or you can hear it there, that's a clutch slipping. And it works in the opposite direction as well, so you can't really over tight the screw. Also what I'll do now is show you how easy it is to swap the bits and it locks them in there as well so it doesn't move. You just pull this up, pull it out, push in the new bit, let go and it locks it in so it can't come out. It's a winner winner. <laughs> also as well, can you see now I've magnetized the bits. I bought this wear a magnetizer here and uh, you can see look, it picks up the screws and magnetize the bits with it and now I don't have to use my tweezers <laughs> to grab the screw when it comes out it sticks to the bit There we go. And these ones are always the tricky ones. Oh, that will come out when I take the drive out. the old fan you can see the mod chip just there in fact I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to just going to magnetize it a little bit more hopefully that grabs the screws a little bit better now Yep, there you go, straight away look. Really good that um, magnifier, sorry, magnetizer, magnifier. <laughs> and I'll show you the clutch guys. Right, so I'll switch it in, I'm gonna switch it now to, to screw in, but watch the clutch, right? It won't tighten it up anymore. So you can't over tighten it. It's really, really good. I think I paid 34 pounds for this. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to get one. Um, it just saves a lot of time. I mean, you see how quick and easy it is. You know, it's a assembly line electric screwdriver the only disappointment with it is the cables a little bit stiff um, if it was like a, a weaker rubber or something like a silicon cable um, it'd be a lot better um, but that's I'm just nitpicking guys it's actually very good you can see how it just motors through everything I think that's all the screws board there we go that's 
the motherboard out. So I'm ready to solder in the new three pin header for the fan. Now if you remember from my previous video where I mod my Xbox 1.0 I mentioned in that video we can't use this connector for the fan. The reason for that is because this is 6 volts and it ramps up the fan when this gets hot so it originally starts off at 6 volts now we're using a 12 volt fan so we can't use this and um, what we have to do is we have to populate this connector here and this was originally for the GPU fan but Microsoft decided to remove the GPU fan in later Xboxes and just put a bigger heat sink on there but this here this footprint is still there um, you can solder in a free pin header for a fan and that outputs 12 volts so i'm gonna solder this into here and then we've got uh, our connector for our fan make sure i get the right way around nope <laughs> There we go, now we're the right way around. Flip it over and solder it in. Expansion. Yep. And it looks good. There we go. We've got our fan header all wired in. What I want to do now is I want to remove these heat sinks. I want to clean off all the old thermal compound that's on there that Microsoft put on there on the factory. It's really crap. And I'm going to put some of this Arctic MX4 on there, which should be a lot better than the crap that's under this. <laughs> now this one uh, is pretty easy to take off. Let's remove the actual clip like that. And what you can do is you just grab it and wiggle it. And as you wiggle it, you pull up. There you go it's off now this one's a little bit more of a pain it can be a little bit more tricky you got to be careful with this because this plastic can get a little thingy so you push down and then you pull the clip out see what I mean about how tough it is I might have to do this one off camera guys because I don't really want to snap this yet I'm going to do it off camera because I don't want to snap that I've got it off. Sorry I had to film that off camera guys. I, I really didn't want to break uh, this piece of plastic because if you do it's it's you know it's a pain in the ass to get another one. Uh, but all you do 
is you push down on this and you get something behind it and you push it out uh, and it will come off and then you take it off. Now to get this one off, this heat sink's a little bit more tricky. But the way I do it is I grab it like this and all I do is I twist and I keep twisting until it's getting loose. It's getting loose, it's getting loose. Now what I can do is keep twisting and pull up and there you go, it comes off. And there you can see all the old crappy compound that Microsoft put on there. Uh, it really is garbage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend five minutes cleaning this old compound off. I'm not going to film that. Who wants to see that? And then once I've cleaned it off, I'll come back and we'll put the heat sinks back on. Now, as you can see, I've cleaned the old thermal whatever you want to call it, it's not compound, it's like rubber, it's horrible. Uh, off the GPU and the CPU, I've also cleaned it off the heat sinks. And what I'm going to do now is put some nice MX4 on there. I'm going to start with it, I might have enough for the CPU, but I've got some more. I'm going to put some mx4 there like that and that should be enough oh that's way too much you can never have enough <laughs> just kidding okay so which way around i think it goes it doesn't really matter put that on there like that turn it around and then i'm gonna put the catch back on so that needs to go under there like that and push down there we go and then we just take the lever push down and there we go we've got our nice mx4 under there should be a lot better than the crap microsoft put on there i'm going to do the same with the second one it's the same thing guys i'm just going over it again so yeah i'll do that and then come back and that's the thermal compound replaced under the GPU and the CPU should run a lot cooler now better than that crap Microsoft put on there so yeah I'm gonna put this back together and we can test the new fan that I need to install what I want to do now is remove the old fan now the fan is not screwed in it's actually clipped in uh, and the way you do it is you pull up on it like this from the top and if I turn it to the side you can see there's a clip just here you need to pull that out and same on this side as well just down there hopefully you can see that there's a clip just down there as well uh, and you pull those out and then you can pull the fan up like this in this direction uh, and then you can get the fan out. Now I'm going to do this off camera because, yeah, um, I obviously can't film it all this and, and take this fan out at the same time. Now if I re use my other camera, when I'm trying to, because you've got to get force on it to get the fan out, I'm going to be doing this and it's going to be shaking all over the place. So I'm just going to do it off camera. Now I've gone ahead and printed the bottom portion of the not to a fan mount what's happening now is it's printing the top half uh, of the fan mount now what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below where you can download this STL file if you want to print it out and I'll also put a link to an eBay auction where you can buy one I don't sell it but I'll I'll link to the auction just in case you ain't got a 3d printer what I've done is I've connected the new 12 volt knock to a fan um, into its mounting housing uh, now to get this in it's pretty easy the easiest way is just to tilt it like this and get it past this clip first here and then what you do is you push it down a bit and then you're in there and then what you need is you see these two wing bits here they need to be pushed back like that and then all you do is you just take it push down and that's it you're in simple as that and I put the 
motherboard back in the Xbox. It's got a nice new thermal paste now on the GPU and CPU under those heat sinks. It's got a nice quiet knock to a fan in there. I've plugged the knock to a fan into the new pin header I installed. Let's power on the Xbox and see if we get fan spin and we do. It's fan spin and you can see there's Sir BIOS booting. Now I'm going to power it off because obviously there's no hard drive or DVD ROM connected and it will just time out. Um, but why I'm here I can show you the mod chip. Now remember when I said this had two banks of 512k of flash? Well, you just see me boot Sir BIOS. And if I flick this switch, it should go to bank one. And bank one's got the old M8 Plus BIOS on there. But it's not got the logo, and I'll show you that. If I power on the Xbox, you'll see it boot the old M8 Plus. And there you go. Um, normally the logo would come here, but I think my friend removed it. Because uh, he didn't like the logo. Uh, but that's the old M8 plus BIOS booting so what I've done is I put the DVD ROM back in I put the R drive back in the reason for that is obviously you can see I put the new 80 pin IDE cable in there and obviously you come up from the side if you watch my previous video I explain why you come up from the side um, but yeah I've not got it in there properly I've just hooked it up so I can test the DVD ROM drive and the hard drive because obviously I want to test this cable before I put a new uh, hard drive in there so I've not really cable managed it properly I've done this bit but not that bit so yeah I'm just going to power on and see if we get a boot to the dashboard and if we do that tells me the hard drive side is working and then what I'll do is I'll put the disc in the DVD ROM and if it comes up game we know the DVD ROM side is working as well um, because it's best to eliminate any problems with this cable now before I put an hard drive in there I want to make sure it's working and there we go it's putting the dash so yeah we know the hard drive is working because obviously it won't boot if the IDE cable was something wrong with it so I'm going to eject the DVD ROM drive I'm going to pop in the flash a disc uh, and hopefully it should come up game it's interrealizing check in game and there you go it's come up game so yeah that IDE cable is okay um, what I'm going to do now is upgrade the hard drive so what I want to do now is partition and format the new 4 terabyte hard drive I'm going to be putting into my friend's Xbox now what I've done is I've downloaded Fat Explorer here so I'm going to go in there and I'm going to run this I'll put a link in the description below to this program now the most important thing I need to do first is install the driver but I've already gone ahead and done it now the easiest thing to do if you want to install the driver is just hover over here and it will say install the driver and you just install the driver now what that driver allows you to do is actually access the partition so you can copy files over uh, to the new hard drive so I'm gonna partition and format this hard drive that's going in my friend's Xbox so I'm gonna come up to format tools original Xbox HDD click on that and there it is, you can see it's found it. This is the new 4 terabyte hard drive. It's actually 364 terabytes. You never get the full 4 terabyte. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna click next. And the next one I need to choose is Sir BIOS because obviously we're using Sir BIOS. I click on that, next. And what I want to do is, you can see it's made two partitions the two larger partitions F and G now what I want is just one large F partition I don't want the G partition so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that 
I'm going to get rid of the format and I'm going to save that so that's got rid of the G now what I need to do is change the F so it maxes the drive I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to press this here where it says max and there you go you can see I've gotten the, the full 3.63 terabyte now the next thing I need to do is I need to change the cluster size now because this hard drive is between two and four terabytes I need to change the cluster size to 256 kilobytes and there it is and that's it I'm gonna save that and press next and I don't need to do any of this because I'm gonna be copying the files over manually myself so I'm gonna press next and we're ready to format so here we go so I'm turning back now format complete successful your device is now ready to use and it's as simple as that what I've done off camera is I backed up my friend's original R drive that was in there the 250 gigabyte R drive that was in there I backed up all the files off it um, I did that off camera um, the reason I didn't film that is because obviously I'm going to be copying those files to the new R drive this new 4 terabyte R drive and it's just the reverse so I'd be filming the, the same thing twice um, now remember to do this you need to have this driver installed here and it's very easy you just hover over it and go install and it will install the driver for you what that driver does is it allows windows to see xbox hard drive partitions so what i need to do now is start transferring the c drive that i backed up from my friend's original hard drive to the new four terabyte hard drive because that's where the dashboard and, and things are stored so I'm going to go into device up here and you can see it's come up it's recognized the drive as an Xbox drive I'm going to click on it and it, I'm going to put load device and it's going to ask me which partition I want to mount so I'm going to mount the C and it's going to mount it on X and that so that will be the drive letter of the drive so I'm going to mount that and there we go it's popped it up you can see now Windows can see this drive now I'm going to go to where I backed up my friend's hard drive remember this is just a reverse of what I did when I was backing it up so I put it in Xbox backup and is the C drive that I backed up I'm going to select all the files I'm just going to drag that over and copy those over there and there we go that's the C drive all sorted now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to devices click on this and I need to unmount it again so I'm going to unmount and then I'm going to go to devices click on it again and the same thing's going to happen but this time I'm going to click on the E drive and I'm going to mount the E drive and obviously it's going to come up as X drive and there you go this is the E drive and I need to go over to where I stored my friend's hard drive backup which is on E drive, Xbox backup, E drive here I'm going to select all these, I'm going to copy these over okay and there we go that's that done I'm going to close that down I'll actually keep that there so I don't have to open it again I'm going to go to devices, I'm going to unmount this again and we'll just leave it a few seconds actually get rid of that because that's probably what's causing it no. devices, unmount, and there we go, it unmounted this time and I'm going to go into the load device again and this time I want to choose F and this is where all the games are going to be stored and there you go F drive has popped up as X and I need to go back into the E drive again where I stored my friends emulation and games folder so I'm just gonna drag and drop that over and now wait for a very long time why it copies these over 
and I'll just skip this part guys because it's going to take a long long time to copy these files over so I'll come back once it's done and as you can see I've just quickly hooked up the new 4 terabyte hard drive it's been partitioned it's been formatted and all the games have been copied over so let's power on and see if the Xbox boots from the hard drive and I can hear it spinning and accessing and there we go we're getting the boot and hopefully we get the boot to the dashboard Evo X dashboard and there it is winner winner chicken dinner now the first thing I need to tell you is if you look at the F drive size that's not correct um, and the reason that's not correct is obviously this is a 4 terabyte hard drive it should be a lot bigger than that number here but the problem is is Evolution X dashboard has not been updated for a very long time and it can't handle displaying hard drives uh, that are very large like this one this four terabyte hard drive but there's nothing wrong with Evo X it'll load and play the games like normal um, it's just it will always display the incorrect size but yeah that's successful what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out the old hard drive I'm going to put this one in neaten it up and then get the lid back on it and we're all done baby <laughs> and as you can see we're all back together now a little confession guys this is a couple of days later uh, and I'll show you why um, what I decided to do was I wasn't happy with Evo X dashboard um, it's a little, little bit long in the tooth you know it's pretty old now you saw how it wasn't correctly displaying the correct hard drive size and as you can see I've changed the boot animation as well um, so it looks pretty much like it used to back in the day but there you go you can see um, instead of Evo X it's got Xbox Media Center for gamers um, because yeah Evo X is getting a little bit long in the tooth but as you can see uh, there's uh, Xbox Media Center for gamers and if I move the carousel you can see the games loading um, now all I did was I took my uh, Xbox I removed the hard drive and I basically just copied over the games um, that was on my hard drive and I changed the Sir BIOS INI um, after I'd install Xbox media for, for gamers uh, and then I changed the boot from Evolution X to Xbox media for gamers but you can see if I power it off uh, and then power on <laughs> power buttons working now <laughs> but you'll see it boot again uh, into Xbox media center for gamers and uh, yeah I got the uh, it's not completely the old Xbox boot logo it's slightly different um, if you look at it compared to a, a genuine boot uh, of the Xbox logo but it, it looks close to it um, but yeah there you go and uh, that's Xbox Media Center for Gamers um, so yeah there you go guys hope you liked the video if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one Winner, winner. It's a nice Xbox now. Catch you next time, guys.